Good morning, Transformers. Thank you for joining us again for today's devotion. Now, if you tuned in yesterday, we were looking at a topic that we called more valuable than gold or silver. More valuable than gold or silver. And we saw that um, from yesterday's uh, topic that the one thing that God has mentioned that is more valuable than gold or silver is wisdom. Yeah? And we saw that wisdom was created before the foundations of the earth. And that God used wisdom to lay the foundations of the earth to put the heavens in place. Yeah? And we saw some parables. The wise and the foolish are virgins. We saw the wise and the foolish builder. And we're able to understand what wisdom is from the earthly perspective and from the biblical perspective. And so today, we continue with the same topic. Um, today we're trying to answer the question, are you a wise man or are you a foolish man? Are you a wise woman or are you a foolish woman? And before we start, I would like us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we come before you. Thank you for the word that you provided to us this morning. How we pray, but as your word enters into us, O Jehovah, Father, you give us revelation and you give us insight, O Jehovah, Father. We present this devotion in your hands, O God. May you speak to each and every one of the listeners. And may you uh, make them understand, O Jehovah, Father, the areas in their lives where they need wisdom, O Jehovah, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. So as we're seeking to understand if we are wise men or foolish men, wise women or foolish women, I would like us to uh, put it in the context of the signs that you need wisdom. Signs that you need wisdom. Today we're going to look at five signs that you need wisdom and then tomorrow we'll finish with the other five signs. Um, and the first sign that you need wisdom is that you're hot-headed or hot-tempered. That means you're confrontational or you're quarrelsome. The interesting thing about this is that we seem to take pride in that. We seem to take pride in being confrontational, in being quarrelsome, in being tough, because it sounds like you're being tough and being, um, you're a no-nonsense, yeah? That is what it sounds like in, 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 to, to, to other people. But according to the Bible, this is a sign of foolishness. Being hot-tempered, being quarrelsome, being confrontational is a sign of foolishness. And as long as there are people who are born of different mothers, who are of different ages, who are of different genders, who are of different um, economic statuses, who are of different upbringings, who are of different education um, status, people will never always agree on anything. And that's where we manage our conflicts with wisdom. Not being quarrelsome, not being confrontational, and not being hot-tempered, but reasoning things out. Yeah, reasoning things out. Um, it's easier to, to, to attract um, bees with sugar than with vinegar, the Bible says. Yeah, it's easier to attract bees with, vinegar, with sugar than with vinegar. And maybe that's the way we're supposed to look at it. Now, I want us to look at the Bible and what it says about being confrontational or being quarrelsome. Let's read from the book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 16. And the Bible says, Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. Yeah? Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. So when you're showing your annoyance by shouting, by being confrontational, that is a foolish thing to do. Yeah? But the wise people, they overlook an insult. Um, when you talk about overlooking an insult, I'm reminded of um, an image of, um, if you've watched a banana plant, yeah, in, during the rainy season, when the water falls from the sky, when it's raining, the banana leaves allows the water to just flow, just flow on, off the leaves. It doesn't hold the water to it, because if it holds, the banana leaf itself will, 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 will be torn into shreds, yeah? Maybe that's the way you're supposed to look at even insults, yeah? Look at the person who's, who's insulting you with mercy. Not just hold on to that insult. Just let it flow. Let it flow off you, you know? Don't let it hold on to you, but just let it go off you. Again, the book of Proverbs chapter 14 verse 17 says, A quick-tempered person does foolish things, and the one who devises evil, as evil schemes is hated. So, a quick-tempered person does foolish things. And it's true. When you're quick-tempered, you might 
you know, like um, say a word that you can never retract. Once it's spoken, it's gone out into the atmosphere. You will never be able to retract that. And sometimes the things that we say can break relationships for life. You know, so it's best to just hold your tongue. And I'm reminded of um, a story I read of, of Ben Carson. When he was younger, he mentioned that he had issues with, with a very bad temper. At one point, he was talking, he'd gone to visit a friend and they had an argument. Uh, I can't quite remember what the argument was about, but the, he, uh, Ben got so angry that he took a knife and stabbed his friend. And because God is so loving, God is so merciful, um, the, 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 the knife only stabbed the belt of that friend, the buckle, and the buckle split into two. Yeah? And Ben Carson says that if that uh, knife would have gone into that man, that young man, it would have killed him. And look what would have become of this great Ben, ben Carson that we all know, you know. He wouldn't have been the man that he has grown up to become. He would have ended up, you know, in prison for life. And that's the thing that the Bible is mentioning, that a quick-tempered tempered person does foolish things, like we've seen with the story of Ben Carson. And also the Bible warns us, in Proverbs 22, 24, against being friends with hot-tempered people, yeah? And it says, do not make friends with hot-tempered people, uh, do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered, 25, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. That is what the Bible says. So we are supposed to stay away from hot-tempered people. First of all, because they will provoke you, you know, and second, there is no reasoning with a hot-tempered person because a fool is wise in his own ways. When you try arguing with a, with, with a, with a hot-tempered person, with a fool, as the Bible calls them, people will never know the difference. You and that fool, that hot-tempered person, that quarrelsome person are one and the same thing. So the Bible says, stay away from hot-tempered people. All right. So the first reason, uh, sign that we've seen that you um, are either wise or foolish is if you're hot-tempered. We've seen that hot-tempered people, the Bible refers to them as foolish. And the second um, kind of people that the Bible refers to as foolish are the naive people, the impressionable people, people who are fooled by words and appearances, people who do something without thinking uh, the consequences through. Basically, people who lack discernment. Now, I know this is a tricky one, considering that we are in the era of social media where people post only the good sides of their lives, you know, when they're on holiday, when they are uh, posing next to their car or their new house, or even a borrowed car or borrowed house, you know, or you, you know, you're just telling us the good things that are happening in your life, you know, yeah. Um, we also see that even with PR companies uh, or, you know, like the marketing departments, they can sell you a product with so many good words, eh, with so many good words, that you will only be buying a box with air inside. They can be very, very good at, at convincing us. And the Bible tells us not to be easily convinced, not to be naive, not to be impressionable. Um, and I know it's not easy um, because we also see that even in the church, we have many false prophets. And the Bible also warns us against that. There will be many false prophets, prophets in the ends of time. You know, and the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15, that the simple believe anything, but the prudent give thoughts to their steps. So I think it's a challenge to us. Don't always believe everything you hear. Yeah, the charismatic people they can easily, you know, um, charm you with their words. You know, um, or with the, the era of makeup, you're not even sure what someone really looks like. Yeah. But um, we're told, don't believe everything that you, you hear, everything that you see. Um, have a discernment, you know, have discernment. Just ask again, is this really what I am seeing? You know, is this really the truth? Yeah, and let's look at the third uh, sign that you need wisdom. And the third sign that you need wisdom is that you're impatient. <laughs> you're impatient. Um, and the Bible talks about impatience in the story of Samuel. I mean, sorry, the story of Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 13. Now, the story of Saul is um, one that is pretty sad. You know, um, he was a young, handsome man that was 
picked to lead Israel, you know. And here he is, 30 years old, he's gone into war with um, the Philistines. And the Israelites are cornered, you know, and he needs to make a sacrifice. And he waits for the seven days, the mandatory seven days. And uh, the prophet Samuel does not show up to make the sacrifice. Things are getting worse, you know. Yeah, and he chooses to make this sacrifice because he says that his troops are scattering. Things are getting thick. I, I just have to do this. I have no choice. He was impatient. He was rash. He made a sacrifice. And because of that sacrifice he made, <coughs> um, Samuel told him, uh, what have you done? Now the kingdom will not be in your hands anymore. It was taken away from him because he was impatient. Sometimes in our impatience, we have valid results you know, valid reasons. Time is running out. Um, you know, this deal looks so good. I don't want to wait upon the Lord. Maybe it's a business deal. Um, you're getting something at a better price. Uh, you know, I, you can just compromise a little bit. If you're, um, you know, you're a lady and you need to get a baby within a certain period of time, you're like, I can't wait for God anymore. You know, I'll just go ahead and get a baby with anyone so that um, I don't lose out of the opportunity to get a baby. You become impatient and you do something stupid. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29, whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. Whoever is patient has great understanding. Basically, patience and wisdom have been equated to mean one and the same thing, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. May the Lord help us to be patient. It is not easy to be patient. But with his help, he will help us to maneuver through life. All right. Now, another sign that you need wisdom is if you cannot be led. If you cannot be led. In order to read um, the, uh, the scripture on the same, it's from the book of Proverbs chapter 10, verse 8. And it says, The wise in heart accept commands. But a chattering fool comes to ruin. The wise in heart accepts commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. So basically, what the Bible is saying, that if you're wise, you accept commands. Now, commands come from our rulers. Yeah, Commands come from our rulers. And now, we know one thing for sure, is that the world has only one, one God, and that's our God. And the same model is used in the rest of the world. We have one president. We have one boss. We have one husband in the house, you know. We have one bishop, for example, in our church. And the, God is telling us to accept commands. And when we accept commands, that's a sign that we are wise. Now, if, um, if, if your boss, for example, doesn't look like they're deserving of being your boss, and you know much more than they do, they don't understand their operations, they're not as knowledgeable as you are, the Bible still says, Obey them and pray for them. Maybe I'll just like to uh, challenge you. Obedience is not just by words or by actions. It comes from the heart. You have to be honest in your obedience. You have to be truthful in how you obey. Not just by doing it, but your, your heart is angry and bitter. It's by the way you do it. You have to do it with total obedience and total sincerity. And sometimes... Having that boss who does not obey, I mean, who does not look like they are deserving of that position, who's not even um, wise enough, sometimes it's a test of our, uh, to help us grow in our faith. Because um, I'll tell you for sure, when God picks bosses, when God picks um, fathers, when God picks presidents, when God picks um, governors, it is, it is, it doesn't drop them from heaven as angels. They are just people like you, like me, full of mistakes, full of weaknesses, full of shortcomings, but God still expects us to obey them and to honor them. And as I was saying, it could be a test of your character. You obeying somebody who's highly faulted, highly, um, you know, um, problematic, for example, if so, so to say, is a test of your character as a Christian. Can you still obey uh, because God has said, not because that person is worthy of your obedience, just because that person has been put in a place of authority, God expects you to obey them. All right, and now let's look at the last um, sign for today that you need wisdom. Now, if you resent correction, if you resent 
correction. The Bible says you're not wise. And let's see the book of Proverbs chapter 10, verse 8. What does it say? The wise are glad to be instructed, but babbling fools fall flat on their faces. The wise are glad to be instructed, but babbling fools fall flat on their faces. Again, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31 says, Whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. Whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 12, Mockers hate to be corrected, so they stay away from the wise. Basically, what the Bible is saying is that if you hate to be corrected, then you are foolish. I know it's not easy to be corrected. We all believe we know everything, but that belief is what is equated to foolishness. So today, I'd like to urge you to remember that correction, especially from a godly person, especially from a person with authority, is expected of us so that we can be regarded by the Bible, by God, as wise. You know, we've come to the end of the devotion for today, and we've seen five signs of people who need, people who need wisdom. And number one are people who are impatient. Yeah, we see that impatient people need um, are foolish. That's what the Bible says. People who are naive, people who are impressionable are foolish people. People who are hot-tempered are foolish people. We've also seen that people who do not, uh, cannot be led. They can't be led. They have to be in charge of every situation. And then those ones are also naive. And finally, we've seen that people who hate correction are also regarded as foolish. So thank you so much for watching today's portion. Remember, that the Bible says that as long as you are listening to the word of the Lord, as long as you are reading the word of the Lord and you are keeping those words, then the Bible calls you blessed. That's Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. So may you continue listening to the word. May you continue uh, getting blessed by this word in the name of Jesus. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we come before you. Thank you for the word that you've given us today. You've warned us against hot temperedness. You've warned us against being naive and impressionable, oh God. You've warned us, oh God, about uh, hating to be corrected, Lord, hating to be led, Jehovah Father. And you've also warned us that um, we need to be wise. We need to be wise, we need to be wise and stay away from the hot tempered people. God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would enable us to be all of these things that you have mentioned in the word. Work in us, Jehovah Father, make us better as you are, the perfect son of God that you are, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen.